Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church Richardson. I'm Clayton Oliphant, pastor of the church. We welcome all of you. If you're watching us uh, live on Sunday morning or watching a replay of this service, we're so glad that you've chosen to be with us today. I want to encourage, if you're watching by live stream, to uh, sign in on the tab above the screen. And if you're watching on Facebook Live uh, on the um, comment section, you'll see a link right now where you can sign in. Again, we're gl so glad to have you today. We have some exciting things going on in the life of our church today. We begin a new sermon series on the book of Acts called Into the Unknown. There's a companion uh, Bible study to go along with this taught by Joni Way on Thursday evenings. You can sign up for that on our website. Also on our website, you'll find information about our book study for the month of June called Love Does. It's part of our year of service. Love Does is a book by Bob Goff. We'll be doing that on Wednesday evening. So two wonderful opportunities for you to be engaged in the life of our church in the month of June. Uh, we are continuing online only in the month of June, and we uh, again encourage you to tell your friends and, and stay engaged in the life and ministry of First United Methodist Church Richardson. I want to uh, hear this morning on Pentecost Sunday a very special message from our bishop, Bishop Mike McKee. Hello, I'm Mike McKee, the bishop of the North Texas Conference of the United Methodist Church. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and I'm standing in the sanctuary of St. Andrew United Methodist Church, which is where we were scheduled to have this year's annual conference on this day, on Pentecost. I want to come here and just sort of send some greetings to all of the clergy and laity of the North Texas Conference to thank you for the ministry in which you have done over the last 12 weeks. And yes, it's been that long since we've been gathering in churches. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for the way you've reached out to the communities. And I know that it's been difficult and challenging. I know many of you want to return to your church and we'll be able to do that at some time and some will come sooner than others. But even that will come with some difficulty. But I know that you're faithful enough to do it in a way in which no one has any harm inflicted upon them. And I want you to know also that we're not going to go back and think things are gonna be like they were I hope that what's happened is a rekindling of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit among us in such a way that will heed the cry of the prophet Joel. The prophet Joel who Peter quoted on Pentecost Day, that first Pentecost. That young men and young women shall see visions. And old men and old women shall dream dreams. I hope you've caught both a vision and a dream of the future of what the church can be and how we can be in deeper and broader and more inspiring ministry to the people in our communities. So thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your continued support of ministry and may God bless you. Thank you, Bishop McKee, for that wonderful message this morning. On this Pentecost weekend, we are so excited that as a part of our celebration this weekend, we're having confirmation services, uh, social distance confirmation services for almost 70 of our young people who are being confirmed this weekend. Along with that, we're baptizing, again, my first social distance baptisms, uh, 25 of our, of our young people this weekend as a part of the, the confirmation celebration. Again, uh, the ministry of the church continues on in the midst of a very strange season of life. We continue to be the church of Jesus Christ. We're so glad that you're with us today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Pentecost Sunday, we pause a moment to prepare ourselves for worship and invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts. We invite you to join us in the call to worship. Come Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, visit us again on this day of Pentecost. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Like a rushing wind that sweeps away all barriers. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Like tongues of fire that set our hearts aflame. Come Holy Spirit. With speech that unites the babble of our tongues. Come Holy Spirit. With love that overlaps the boundaries of race and nation. Come Holy Spirit. With power from above to make our weakness strong. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, renew the whole creation, send the wind and flame of your transforming life to lift up the church in this day. Give us wisdom and faith that we may know the great hope to which we are called. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Spirit of truth, set us free to emerge as the children of God. Open our ears that we may hear the weeping of the world. Open our mouths, that we may be a voice for the voiceless. Open our eyes, that we may see your vision of peace and justice. Make us alive with the courage and faith of your prophetic truth. Come Holy Spirit. Spirit of unity, reconcile to your people. Give us the wisdom to hold to what we need to be your church. Give us the grace to lay down those things you can do without. Give us a vision of your breadth and length and height to challenge our smallness of heart and bring us humbly together. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy Spirit, transform and sanctify us as we take up this task in your name. Give us the gifts we need to be your church in spirit and truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen.
Church, it is Pentecost Sunday. Today is the day we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. It is the day in which we celebrate the Holy Spirit living and loving through us. The Holy Spirit is God's love for the world shown through us. And it makes us one, it makes us together, it makes us community. So let us be the church. I invite your attention to the bulletin where we have this week's list of joys and concerns and also to the uh, list of joys and concerns that is available online. Will you join your hearts with mine as we go to God in prayer? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill our hearts that we may love ever larger. Make us one with each other and one in ministry to all the world. Help us to know your loving and guiding presence. God, we are not together in body, but your spirit unites us together in purpose, in ministry, and in mission. Our hearts ache for the violence, for the violence done in Minneapolis St. Paul. Lord, help us identify and root out systemic racism wherever it can be found. Make us truly people who are inclusive and loving of all of your creation. God, we pray for the police that they may be just and serve justice. We pray for those whose voice is not heard. We pray for those who feel that they must use violence to make their voice heard. Give us ears to listen that we might know their complaint and respond as lovingly as we are able. Beyond that, with your Holy Spirit. God, we pray for all of those working in hospitals, for those who are serving in essential functions, whether it's workers at restaurants or people who are serving at grocery stores. Their ministry is a ministry to us all. Keep them safe and protect them. Guide and strengthen all who care for us in this time. Nurses, doctors, hospital techs, internists, and everyone on the front lines of this pandemic. Give us strength and love to be your people, that we might bear good fruit, that we might be truly worthy to be grafted onto your vine. Give us to know your love, that we may love. All this is our prayer, and we offer it in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The ministry of First United Methodist Church Richardson continues on even as our building is closed. We are serving our community and loving large. So I invite you to give your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings online, via email, via the app, or to mail your check-in. This helps us stay focused on our mission of loving God's world, even when we can't gather together in person. Please give your gifts now. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Children's Time. I'm Cheryl Bishop, Director of Worship and Children's Ministries here at First United Methodist Church Richardson. And you have joined us with some of my very special friends for a Pentecost party. We are gathered together with bears from all over the world. I have teddy bears and Winnie the Pooh and a polar bear and a koala bear. And what we're doing is celebrating the day of Pentecost, a day that people from all over the world were gathered together not long after Jesus had died and risen. And so while they were together, people from all over who spoke different languages, suddenly the rush of the mighty wind came through where they were and the Holy Spirit was upon all of them. They had tongues of fire dancing on their heads and they could speak languages they had never spoken before and they could understand languages that they'd never heard before, all because the power of the Holy Spirit was reminding them about the power of Christ's love. From that day forward, people began to spread the word of, of God and of the church and of Jesus' teachings and that is what we call the birth of the church. And so on this day, we celebrate the birthday of what it means to be a part of God's church. And so on the count of three, I want you to shout, happy birthday, church. Are you ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday, church. It's a great day for us to remember that the Holy Spirit is powerful in our lives and that God can be with us always, and that Jesus' love is something we get to experience and then teach to others in the world. So as we have a very special party, I hope that you'll get to do that too. Maybe you could make some tongues of fire as party hats. And you could say happy birthday church all day long. But let us pray together now as we end this special time. Almighty God, thank you for your church that teaches us your word and shares God's love. Be with us this day as we celebrate and help us in days to come to teach others about you and about Jesus and about all the love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a very good day. Good morning. And now we come to the time of scripture in our service. Today is the Sunday of Pentecost the day when disciples and others were filled with the Holy Spirit to go into the world to make disciples. Today I'm wearing our mission trip t-shirt, and I don't know if you can see on the back, it says, Go Serve Love. And that's what the church is about, and that's what we try to do when we go on our mission trips to Guatemala and South Africa, to Panama, is to go and serve and love in the name of Jesus Christ and First United Methodist Church. So now let us listen to these words from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Emilites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, 
Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we begin a new series called Into the Unknown. It's not just a, a song from Frozen 2, it's also a way of life for Christians to think about walking in faith into the unknown that is before us. Um, that is the history of the church. And today is the birthday of the church, Pentecost Sunday, a day that we celebrate what God is doing and God's Holy Spirit coming upon us and breathing new life into us that we may be the people of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ for the world, that we may proclaim the good news of His resurrection. Pentecost was a, a festival in the, in the Israelite culture. It was uh, seven weeks after Passover. You had 49 days, seven weeks after Passover. And then on the 50th day, Pentecost, the 50th day, they had a big feast and celebration. It was an excuse to get together and have food and remember the story of God. That's, that's what church is about, isn't it? We, we come together and we fellowship together and we rehearse and remember the story of God's movement in our lives, how God has breathed life into us and redeemed us and how God is moving to push us out into the world to share with others the good news of Jesus Christ. So we celebrate the birth of our church. It's not only, you know, in, in the month of June, we, we typically will celebrate the uh, birth of our church 134 years ago, 15 charter members here in Richardson, Texas, chartered what would become the first United Methodist Church of Richardson. And we are standing on their shoulders today as their spiritual heirs and also seeking to build a foundation for those who come after us to stand upon as they do ministry into the unknown, into the future that God has for us. So uh, on Pentecost, we remember this, this scene that the disciples have waited after the ascension, ascension of Jesus. That Jesus has ascended to heaven and told them to wait in Jerusalem and that they will receive power from the Holy Spirit to be witnesses. And when the power comes upon them, they will be witnesses to the ends of the earth. And so on that Pentecost Sunday, as they were all together for worship, they... Um, experienced something uh, of the presence of God's Holy Spirit. It fell upon them like tongues of fire upon them, and they began to speak in lang other languages, and yet, even though people were speaking in different languages, all these different nationalities, people who had come from around the world to celebrate this festival, from different races and cultures and nations, they found they could understand each other, that the spirit of the living God was with them and was unleashing in them uh, a new movement of God's spirit into the world as they went out to, then to proclaim the good news of Jesus and his love. Simon Peter um, stands up and preaches this bold sermon and it's amazing uh, before the very people who crucified Jesus he proclaims that Jesus has been raised from the dead. And he invites people to, to uh, be a part of this movement called the Church of Jesus Christ, the way of Christ, to follow in, in the way of Christ. And, and it's this amazing moment when 3,000 people that day respond. They say, what must we do to be saved? And, and, um, and Simon Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn your life toward Christ. Be baptized, be renewed in, in His way and be part of this amazing movement of God's Spirit. And so in this, in this moment, you have this, this amazing uh, launch into the unknown. They didn't know where they would be led by God's Spirit. They just fully trusted that God was with them 
and that because God was with them, they could face any unknown future that was before them. Even if that meant their own martyrdom, they were willing to go and proclaim this good news of Jesus and His love. So today I want to um, look at this and what this might mean for us as we live our lives into the unknown. We don't know what the future holds, but we trust who holds the future. We trust that God is with us. We don't know what this pandemic means for the future of our world, for the future of our nation, for the future of our church. But we do know that if God is with us, God will provide for us a way forward. God will lead us into the unknown. And that with God's spirit leading us, we know that we're going to be okay. We know that we can trust in God. So today we want to talk about this, this Pentecost experience and, and what does this mean for us in our lives today? And uh, first of all, I want to point out verses seven and eight. Uh, they were amazed and they wondered, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear in our own language? How is it that we can understand each other in spite of na nationality uh, differences, in, sp in spite of language differences, in spite of cultural, racial differences? How is it that we all feel this unified spirit together in the spirit of Jesus Christ? The Holy Spirit is God alive in us. It is the spirit of Jesus Christ um, moving in our lives and in our world and drawing us together. So the first thing that I, I point out about Pentecost is that the, the Pentecost experience is one when the Holy Spirit comes upon the church, they feel this spiritual unity, this connection. The Spirit breaks down the barriers that separate them from one another. And they are bound together. They are drawn together in a spiritual unity with Christ as the source of that unity. You ever thought about what that means for us? What that means for our lives today? That this spiritual unity is God's desire? That that the barriers that, that human beings have created of race and nationality and cultural barriers that we allow to divide us from one from another, that somehow that is against God's plan, that God's desire is for us to find unity in Christ. In the book of Genesis, in, in chapter 11, you read about the Tower of Babel. And in the Tower of Babel, uh, because of human pride, and sinfulness, uh, the, there's a scattering of the languages and a scattering of nationalities. And then you get here to the day of Pentecost, and on the day of Pentecost, all that scattering is brought back together. All that babble, all of that babbling language is brought together in a unified spirit. What does that mean for us today? I was thinking about that this week in relation to the killing of George Floyd, um, which has again pointed out for our nation uh, the racial divide within our nation, the racial issues that continue to plague us as a nation as we deal with America's original sin. And I think that it's one of those, these, these times in our lives when we're called to be part of the healing answer, that the Spirit of Christ flowing into our lives, the, the Holy Spirit of God calls us to be a unifying presence in the world. This is who the, the church is called to be. As we go into the future, the church has to be a unifying presence that brings people together. I want to challenge those of us in our church family who are white to really begin to listen to our uh, brothers and sisters of color. I really think that this is a time when we are being called upon to listen and to act in a way that is different. I believe that this is a time when we're being called upon to be part of the answer and not part of the problem. I, I can't get that image out of my mind, that disturbing image of George Floyd on the ground 
crying out, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And, and, and you juxtapose that with the, the Holy Spirit of God breathing life into the church to tear down the barriers that separate us from racial barriers, from cultural barriers, from national barriers, that we might find our unity in Christ. And we can't do that if we don't learn to listen to each other. And as we go into the unknown future that God has for us, I'm more and more convinced that the church is called to be an anti-racist, uh, anti-racist force in the world, not just neutral on the issue of race, but that we are actively anti-racist. We are advocates against racism. We have to learn how to listen to the stories of our brothers and sisters of color. We have to learn how to hear their laments, their cries, because they're telling us something right now, that our silence is complicity, that when we are silent, we're part of the problem. The church of Jesus Christ has to be an anti-racist church to build spiritual unity for the future. This is our calling. This is who we're called to be, part of this movement of the spirit of Jesus Christ that brings people together instead of dividing people based on exterior features or language that we are somehow brought together in the spirit of Christ. The second thing that I would lift up about Pentecost and the, the power of the Holy Spirit leading us into the unknown is look at the courageous boldness that the Spirit ushers in, the courageous boldness to speak out and to, to call out the name of Jesus, to call out uh, the power of His resurrection. Simon Peter, who you remember on, on that Thursday before Jesus was crucified on Friday, denied His Lord three times and ran away in shame hiding for fear of his own death, now stands on Pentecost Sunday before the very people who crucified Jesus and says, this Jesus whom you crucified, we believe is the Messiah. And God has raised him and there is nothing, not even death, that can stop God's power from raising him up, proclaiming a message before them of, of new life and new hope and new birth. Uh, what a powerful sermon that Simon Peter preaches. And he talks about this, this uh, power of God unleashed in him and in all the people, that the spirit of the living God gives people a courageous boldness to be who God has called them to be. I think about that boldness within our own church. I think about the ways that people in this church have boldly stepped out. How this church has never been about the building, but about a movement of God's Spirit. I think that's important in this time when we're socially distanced and we're not able to meet together, that the church of Jesus Christ is not about the building. The building, rather, has facilitated our, our mission to share the good news of Jesus and his love with the world. Uh, this is not the first time the church has, has shut its doors for worship um, in, in, in terms of people gathering together. In 1918, in the flu epidemic of 1918, the church closed its doors. And yet, out of that, into the unknown future beyond that, the people in 1925, just a few years after that pandemic, were moved by the Spirit of God to build a new brick building over on Greenville Avenue that became the spiritual home of our church. And then in, 19, in the mid-1950s, 1958, um, our church again was, was moved to, to uh, have this burden of the Holy Spirit to share the love of Christ with more people as this community grew and, and moved to our, our Beltline property at that time in 1958. And then in 1999, the, this, the Spirit of the living God fell upon this church and caused the leaders to say, we 
need to claim a new future that God has for us and move and change locations and build a new campus on our Central Expressway property. I think about the courageous boldness of each of those moves, the courageous boldness of the people to, to trust in God that much and to have that kind of unwavering faith that God was with them and that God had called them to a mission and a purpose. And that mission and purpose were so compelling that they could not not act. They had to get, get out of their comfort zone and move forward and boldly proclaim the love of Christ to more people. I love the story of this, this church because it's part of the story of God's people being moved by the Holy Spirit to step out and share the love of Christ. If we're going to be a church that steps into the unknown, we will do so led by the Holy Spirit. And because the Holy Spirit is leading us, we will do so with courageous boldness. We will boldly go into the future trusting that God has a purpose and a plan. I, I can't help but thinking out of this pandemic, as terrible as this is, with 100,000 deaths now, now reported in our country alone, you know, what is God going to do? What is God going to call us to do that steps outside of our comfort zone? When we built this, this facility, we ask a question. What bold and wonderful thing would you do for God if you knew you couldn't fail? What bold and wonderful thing would you do for God if you knew you couldn't fail? I think that's the question we're being asked again at this time. What bold and wonderful thing is God asking of us to do this day, in this time, out of our current circumstances, to share the love of Christ with more and more people? The last thing I want to go back to is, is this passionate expectation that the disciples of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God, had this passionate expectation that something would happen. Their passion was having experienced the power of, of Christ's love and His resurrection, the Spirit of God poured upon them. They had this expectation that as they shared that love with others, people's lives would change for the good and that the world would change for the good. Can you imagine if we had that kind of expectation? Can you imagine if we had that kind of, that, that kind of hope, that kind of belief that God is at work and that as we are faithful to what God has called us to do, as we proclaim the good news of Jesus and His love for all people, that somehow God's going to take that and we expect to see evidence. We expect to see God's movement in the world. Can you imagine if we really had that kind of expectation? I think verse 17 says it so well in Acts chapter 2. In those last days it shall be as God declares. As, this is Simon Peter quoting the prophet Joel. That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young people will see visions, and your old people will dream new dreams. Can you imagine if we got so filled with the Spirit of the living God that we were visioning and dreaming of what God could do to to heal this world, to bring hope to our lives, that we might have a vision that is beyond anything we could ever dream was possible. In the 1870s, one of our uh, forerunner denominations of the, of the Methodist Church, the United Brethren, were having their annual conference. And one of the bishops, Bishop Milton Wright, was presiding over that annual conference. I think it was in Ohio. And as he presided, it was at a, a Methodist college where the, the, the meeting was held. And he asked the president of the college to make a few remarks, and, and he did. He brought greetings from the college. And then at the, at the end, he said, um, 
President, would you share with the people what you see happening into the future? What, what do you see for the future? And the, the, the college president said, I see that we're entering into an age of great invention and discovery. And I believe that before long, men will be flying in machines. Bishop Wright dismissed this and he said, flight is reserved for birds, it's not for men. And um, he went home, Bishop Milton Wright went home and told his family, including his two young sons, Wilbur and Orville, about the fanciful tales of men flying in machines. Of course, they were the Wright brothers who were the forerunners of modern flight. You never know how God will inspire our young men and women and our old men and women to have visions and dreams for what is possible with God's help. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know um, what is going to happen into the future, but we can trust this, that God has a bold and wonderful future for us that God is with us in the midst of this time and that God's Spirit is calling us to be a healing force in the world today. God's Spirit is moving in the church and in the world to bring people together, to bring healing and hope, to boldly proclaim that it is the love of Jesus and people filled with His Spirit that will transform this world for good. I pray it will be so as we walk boldly into the unknown. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this challenge that you've given to us in your holy word. You call us to be your people. You call us to proclaim the good news. So we pray that you would breathe on us your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your breath. Fill us with that breath of love. Help us to see each other as the children of God we have been created to be. Help us to see ourselves that way. Help us to see strangers that way. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you would fill us with such purpose in our believing that in everything we do, that people will say, those people are filled with the spirit of a loving God, a God of grace, a God of mercy, a God of justice. Let us be your people, O Lord, in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If there's someone who would unite with our church family, we want to invite you to send us an email. You can send that email to join at fumcr.com. Uh, join at fumcr.com. If you want to know what it means to be a follower of Jesus or you have any questions about church membership, just send us an email to that address and we would love to be in touch with you and receive you into membership in our church family.
Thank you for joining us at First United Methodist Church Richardson. Again, we're so glad to have you with us this day, and I pray God's blessings upon you. As you go forth today, I, I pray that you will receive this benediction. May God's Holy Spirit fall upon you and melt you and mold you and shape you and use you in ways that you never dreamed before. May God's Holy Spirit fill you with the breath of God, the love of God filling your lungs that you may embody that love to the world. Let's go into the world and be in the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.